Hello, I always uh, wanted to show you this little device. This is uh, extremely useful for a product photography and stage photography. Now you're not going to find anybody using this for landscape photography for any uh, sort of a spontaneous street photography obviously. It's a little spider cube. It doesn't come with this little miniature uh, Joby uh, tripod. It just has a screw base right here. It's extremely lightweight plastic cube. It's kind of expensive for what it is. You could actually make one yourself. However, disclaimer, it is, uh, I think it's got a patent assigned to it. But uh, I have a little specular chrome ball up here. We have 18% reflectance gray and true white. Now we actually have black here on the bottom. You would actually take a picture of this roughly right about in this position for a product shot or you can actually have someone hold this. And this is a lot easier to use than a color checker passport. Um, uh, color checker passport um, for uh, location shots. However, that's also as easy. But this is easier if you're using a Lightroom as uh, your workflow. You'll notice that there is a really black spot here, but it's actually not a black spot, it's actually a hole. So now you would think this would be actual black, and it is, but it's not true black. And this hole, there is actually a matte black on the inside of this uh, plastic cube, so you have a true, true shadow, a true black point for setting your clipping point. You would actually set this in the scene, and you would apply it to all pictures or under certain lighting conditions, like if you're in a certain part of a church, you'd actually take a, a reference shot with whatever sort of crap lighting or sort of uh, crappy mix lighting that you would have if you couldn't use flash photography. Um, or on location, you'd actually have someone hold this. That's why this little unit should come with a little Joby tripod, because actually having someone hold this eventually will rub finger oils on the cube, and that's not a good idea. It comes with its own little baggie for that very reason. And it was why getting one of these little suckers for 10 bucks is actually important for you to think of using this. That way, if you're ever using it, you're only touching the Joby tripod as opposed to the cube itself. But when you go into Lightroom, excuse me, when you go into Lightroom, <laughs> when you go into Lightroom, what you do is you use your, uh, use your eyedropper tool when you actually first set your white balance. I got two uh, videos below from the company that actually makes this. Now the second is you set your exposure, and the third step is you set your brightness, and the fourth step is that you set your uh, uh, black clipping points. If you don't actually worry about uh, clipping points on your shadows, most people don't even give a damn about that anyway. And if it's clipped, it's clipped. Who really cares where the, sh the clipping point is on uh, your shadows? In most cases, that's true, but when it comes to product photography, that's actually important. So this little ultra lightweight thing that weighs about one ounce is an extremely handy little tool. Like I said, the only thing you'd really use this for is product photography, um, staged um, portrait photography. You'd actually have someone, you'd set your lighting conditions with your light meter or whatever you think correct exposure is. You take one reference shot of this in all consecutive images, both in product photography or portrait photography or on location portrait photography your uh, settings which would be saved from the image where you actually check your white balance, your exposure, your brightness, and your clipping points on your blacks would be applied to all consecutive pictures after that. It really, really, really does speed up your workflow. Then one major mistake people make about a little device like this when it comes to like product photography or doing a uh, a shoot of someone on location or especially indoors is that you think, well, this takes up more time. It does exactly the opposite. Instead of guessing and poking around in the dark like a dumbass, you're able to instantly, without worry about the calibration on your monitor, the calibration of your eyeballs, and the calibration of your brain, you have this in the picture connected to Lightroom that you're using, and you actually have the most important thing that nobody pays attention to in photography, and I've called it ARC, and that is absolute repeatable consistency. And uh, ARC is incredibly important, especially uh, if you want to increase the, uh, the speed of your workflow by decreasing the time you spend pissing away by guessing at what the hell the correct white balance, exposure, brightness, and clipping points on your speculars and your shadows are. Obviously, we have a reference point here for specular clipping, and we have a reference point here for uh, shadow clipping, and we have a reference point here for white balance and middle gray. So this is as simple as it gets. This is an ingenious little device. Like I said, you're not going to use this for 
you know, spontaneous photography. You're not going to use it for event photography. You're not going to, you could use it for landscape photography. I actually know a couple medium format shooters that do on location shoots by themselves using ambient light. And they'll actually set this in the scene, take a shot. And once they go into Lightroom, I mean, you do boom, 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 white balance exposure, brightness, and clipping points. And then, you know, you're set. And then what you do from there is edit it, the shot however you want as far as effects and, you know, healing tools and whatnot in Lightroom. So check the two video links below if you're interested in how to use this in Lightroom. There's no reason to recreate the video. It's a simple little device, and I thought I'd show it to you. Thanks for watching. Bye.